Hi everyone, Jeremy Blum here. In this video, I'm actually going to be talking about a project that I made a few months ago uh, with three other students at Cornell University during my senior year. This was actually a project that we entered into a business plan competition, made it to the finals in. We entered into the Cornell Bits in Our Minds uh, competition and won two awards in it. It was actually pretty successful and for a while we, we played with the idea of turning this into an actual company. We eventually decided not to. Uh, the market was too saturated. It wasn't quite original enough, but it was still a lot of fun. So I've decided now to open source the entire project to allow you guys to play with it. Uh, so all the code and everything will go up online. And now I'm going to show you what it is and, and how it works. So live tech is basically a new means for doing swipe card access to hotel rooms or any other secure facility for that matter. Instead of getting a swipe card, what you do now is you can check in or register online. You get added to a database or the hotel can add you to a database or whatever through a very easy to use admin online interface. And then when you get to the hotel, instead of going to the front desk and checking in, your QR code or 2D barcode has already been emailed to your smartphone or tablet or whatever. And then you go to your room and that acts as your key card access to the room. Instead of swiping a key card, you just hold your phone up to the door and a camera reads the QR code, determines that it's valid and lets you in. When the next person is ready to check into the room, uh, it, the information is swapped on the system. It takes seconds and it's very easy to do. You can even forward your QR code to someone else if you want to give your friend access to the room and you can change it on your own at any time through an online admin interface. If your phone battery dies or anything like that, you can still just print out the QR code at a front desk kiosk or in the lobby or whatever on a piece of paper and that'll work just fine too. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is show you a demo of this system in action that we actually made for our initial uh, project pitch competition. This is the first time I've actually shown this video publicly. So that'll explain how the system works and then I'll go through the technical details and show you exactly what it's doing and how and I'll show you where all the source code is online so that you can make one of these on your own if you wanted to. Uh, this is built on the BeagleBone platform, which is an embedded Linux microcomputer, uh, a lot more complicated than the Arduinos that I use in a lot of my other videos, but still really awesome to work with and allows you to do some really powerful things, like image recognition, which I did in this project. Okay, let's check out the demo video. First things first, let me show you what's going on with the hardware. So basically what we have here is a uh, BeagleBone. This particular one is a Rev A4, but it should work with any of them just fine. Uh, the BeagleBone is actually mounted on a 3D printed case that I created. So there's a 3D printed mount. It can actually work by uh, sitting on a table like this, or you can actually mount it to the wall uh, next to the door like I showed in the demo video. Attached to the USB port of the BeagleBone, is a USB webcam. This is just a standard USB Logitech Pro 9000 webcam that I happen to have. It's plugged into the USB port and interacts with ZBar, which is the barcode reading image recognition software that I've cross-compiled to run on the BeagleBone. Plugged into the top of the BeagleBone are two LEDs, a red and green LED. The red one will illuminate normally when it's locked and the green when it's open. Right now neither of them are on because the program isn't actually running yet. Plugged into the back is the Ethernet connection. This just needs to be connected to the internet in some way so it can communicate up to the remote server that tells it what codes are valid. So right now it's just plugged into the, my router. Uh, there's obviously a power supply, of course. It's not plugged into my computer in any way. It's just plugged into the network. And then I also have hooked up to it a uh, controllable door latch. So this door latch uh, actually is running on a separate 12 volt supply and is being switched on and off by a uh, pretty simple n-channel FET. Uh, along with a reverse bias diode. And that's basically uh, the entire hardware setup. So I'm currently uh, logged into the BeagleBone over the network through SSH. So I'm not actually controlling it or anything, but I'm just going to get the program running on it so that it will start looking for QR codes and being able to unlock the door. Uh, so there's a simple Python script on here that's running and doing all the checking and executing the, uh, the 2D barcode reading. So I'll start that now. You can see it started ZBar, it's running, and right off the bat, there's no uh, valid code presented to the camera, which is what we'd expect because no one's holding one up. We can see that the light on the camera has turned on to indicate that it is indeed active, 
and the uh, red light on the actual unit has turned on indicating that the door is locked. We can confirm if I try to open the switch, it, it, it won't indeed move uh, because the door is indeed locked. Okay, now we're on the uh, demo website page. I've already entered my name and my email address. And if I hit submit now, it'll register my information as being the new valid information for the door lock. It will generate a QR code, email that QR code to me, hash the ID that's been put into that QR code, and put that hash in a special file on the server that the BeagleBone can then access. Importantly, the BeagleBone only accesses the hash and not the actual QR code ID itself. So that makes it the system quite quite secure and very difficult to access the information that you would need to create a uh, fake QR code because hashes, uh, as you might know, are only a one-way operation. You can go from an ID to a hash, but not from the hash back to an ID. So right now, I'll uh, hit submit. It will generate the QR code, hash it, tell me it's been successful, and email it to me. The BeagleBone is now aware of the newest valid QR code and is expecting that. So if we now look down at my tablet, we can see that I've received the email that was sent to me just moments after I hit submit. So I can tap on it and uh, here's our check-in information. So we can see it's saying hi and most importantly, there is our QR code. So that's now on my phone or my tablet or whatever you have and you can hold that to the camera and use it to unlock the door. So let's try it. Okay, so I have my tablet with the QR code that was just emailed to me. And now I can present it to the camera and it should unlock the door. So you can hear the door unlock. The light changes from red to green. It'll stay open for 10 seconds. And you can see that I can now dis fully disengage the door lock. The door lock has now re-engaged and once again, it's locked. I can't open it all the way. I've now had someone else register for the room, which automatically invalidates my previous check-in. So someone new named John Smith has just registered. This is my previous check-in that I just showed you. If I present this one to the camera now, it will not unlock anymore. However, I can open the new one that I just got. Uh, so it's, I have it in another email down here. It now shows as John Smith. So that's our new QR code and I can present this one and sure enough, it unlocks the door again. And that's how the system works. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you find another use for this project or you use some of my code or you use the idea or whatever, please let me know. I'd love to see what you're doing with it. I'd be really curious. Uh, as always, feel free to ask me any questions or anything you got. The easiest way to get in touch with me is on Twitter, twitter.com slash 14 same as my YouTube username. Go check me out, follow me, send me a note, and uh, I'm usually pretty good about replying. Okay, I hope you guys enjoyed this, and I'll see you next time. Thanks.